It almost feels like we've been collecting takes on Brock Purdy like they're Infinity Stones trying to take over the galaxy because we're trying to understand, one, not only how we feel about Brock Purdy, but how others feel, whether in the media, whether former players, current players, even coaches. And I think when we hear from Steve Bagnolo of the Chiefs, who just played against Brock Purdy in the biggest game of the year in the Super Bowl, I think that's an opinion that I think we can take at face value. There's no clicks that need to be generated. He's joining a podcast with Baldy and just talking ball and just talking about the game and giving evaluations. There's nothing to gain for Spagnolo. He just got a contract extension, and he is the best defensive coordinator to ever play in the Super Bowl era now that he's won, what, four Super Bowls? So hearing him talk about Brock Purdy and – the way that they kind of game planned against him and how they had to, you know, treat Brock again is doesn't sound like a quarterback who's just, you know, successful because of a scheme, successful because of the weapons, all those different types of things. So take a listen to Steve Spagnolo right here as he talks about Brock Purdy and uh, what he saw from him in the Super Bowl. Let's go back to Purdy for a second. Generally, because early on, I, I, you know, he had a lot of composure. I, I, I thought, yeah. you, you know, again, because we, you know, we're thinking the same thing. Like you're going to go in and you're going to go zero at times and try to get to him and and, and try to rat him a little bit. And and he he was I was impressed by him. I thought he I thought he showed that same poise throughout the playoffs. Yeah. Um, in those, I mean, they were behind in those other games, uh, and you he didn't flinch. I didn't think, and he got hit. In other games, and he didn't flinch. He didn't flinch in this game. I mean, uh, Nick Bolton hit him once, really got you know right after they got rid of the ball. Yeah, um, a couple other shots that he took, and and I, I thought he, I don't think he got flustered at all. But I kind of felt that he wouldn't. Like I didn't go in there thinking, okay, this is a young quarterback. Right. Let's do this, and we'll get him out of his game because he had proved it to me in the other games that that wasn't the case. So again, he talks about his poise, one of the intangibles, one of the things that Brock Purdy brings to the table that might not be seen from a physical aspect, something you can't measure with a 40 against other guys. So it's not something that is a tangible thing that you could put on a piece of paper and be like, this guy is this much poise, that guy is that much poise. And that's why guys like Brock Purdy slip through the cracks is because the intangible aspect is one of the most important important parts of playing the quarterback position, yet people don't know how to evaluate it. People don't know how to quantify it. And they don't know what to do with it when they have it. So uh, I think it's really cool to hear, you know, the Chiefs defensive coordinator give Brock his credit. Uh, again, saying he saw the poise in the other playoff games, so he knew heading into this game it was something that they would have to keep in mind and that he just wasn't going to get rattled by throwing zero blitz at him you just really had to to honestly outsmart him and you know Brock Purdy's a really smart quarterback and you just got to you had they had to confuse him they couldn't focus on trying to make him make mistakes because the moment was too big and i think that's one of the awesome traits about Brock we've talked about it many times and even Spags talked about it earlier in the week where he said that, you know, they had to change some of their defenses, some of their zone schemes and zone shells because Brock was picking them apart. He he was he was finding the the open holes in the zone coverage and he was taking advantage of it. So they had to make changes in game, make in game adjustments on Brock Purdy just because he was doing a great job. At, a, at taking advantage of it. Now, obviously, Spags, uh, when it was all said and done, he called uh, the, the big play at the right time. And uh, obviously, Spags called the right play at the right time. And you might be like, whoa, how did this guy get here? Well, it happens when you're making videos at home by yourself. Uh, but <laughs> Spags, hey, he did his thing. He was balling. Um, and he called the right play at the right time. And, you know, he came out on top. And uh, I would have to say that that Spags deserves a lot of credit for uh, how he game planned against Kyle Shanahan and Brock Purdy and that whole offense. He did a lot of things to help mitigate yeah, some of the things. And we're still upset about it, huh? Yeah. Are you upset? 
Yeah, me too. And so, hey, again, at the end of the day, you know, we got a quarterback. I know we have a quarterback, and I want to make that clear with Brock Purdy. And again, uh, listening to guys with no biases, um, really, again, nothing to gain from praising Brock. Uh, no clicks or podcast views, nothing. Just talking ball. And uh, these are, I think these are the most important opinions. Um, again, because as we've seen, as we've seen, uh, we know why a lot of things are said and it's to generate views and, and clicks and things like that. Right. Yeah. And we have to be like, that's not true. That's not true. Oh, it's, it's becoming a party. All right. We're officially off the rails on this video, but to be honest, I don't care. <laughs> you say bye to everyone. Say like and subscribe. Like and subscribe for more updates. Uh, it's you. I see you. Oh, don't lick that. All right. Brock Purdy, he's our guy. I got to go, as you can see. Peace.